so very soon. You're watching Northern Lights Out on TSN. When we come back, it's Billy the Kid Irwin and Pablo Psycho Sarmiento in the main event. Back to TSN's coverage of Northern Lights Out. My name's Mike Hogan here ringside with Stephen Brunt and Spider Jones. And we're here with someone who's familiar to all boxing fans, Lennox Lewis, leading contender for the heavyweight title, all heavyweight titles. Lennox, what's happening right now with your career? I know there's been a lot of action in the heavyweight division, a lot of weird things happening. Where, what's happening with you? <laughs> I tell you, Steve, we're trying to get a fight with uh, Mike Tyson, but Don King keeps on stepping in the way, so they're throwing Oliver McCall back at me, so I'd love to get back in the ring with Oliver McCall to prove that, you know, Oliver McCall got through with a lucky punch, but definitely want to get in the ring with Tyson. Now, last I heard, Oliver McCall was in, in rehab somewhere, wasn't he? I, I, I believe that's where he is right now. Definitely. I mean, you know, he can't keep, seem to stay out of trouble, but, you know. Now, we were talking earlier tonight here about you and Riddick Bowe. A lot of people wanted to see that fight for a long time. Now, you saw the Galata fight with Riddick Bowe. What, what were your impressions of that? I was totally disappointed in Riddick Bowe. Riddick Bowe looked like he was a garbage man that day. Galata looked great. Uh, definitely uh, lowered the money between me and him. Now uh, I think that threw a fight between me and him out of the window now. I think he realizes that he can't beat me. Robert Newman realizes he can't beat me, so he's staying away from me right now. Now you're here, you're in the health club business here as well. We had your partner in here, Ty Dumb. You spend yeah. a lot of time in Canada there. I that would be a plug, right? Life sport. Life sport. Okay. You're going to be, uh, are you spending a lot of time here these days? Yes. I'm down in Brampton, so, uh, you know, you should see me around the town. Okay, well, we're glad that we're glad to have you back in Canada. Lennox, thanks for, uh, thanks for dropping by. All right, thanks for having me. The very uh, modest Lennox Lewis as we go from one Olympian to another, looking at Billy Irwin in his room before his belt, which is coming up momentarily as the kid gets ready to enter the ring. Joining me, indeed, a special guest, the CEO, is the CEO of the Canadian Olympic Association. Let's throw it back to ringside. And Stephen Braun. Thanks, Mike. We're here with Gary Oliver, who's the man who puts this all together. Gary, congratulations on another successful promotion tonight. First of all, very much. I wonder if you could just give us a sense of where we are. And obviously, you're anticipating this fight tonight with Billy with Sarmiento. But beyond that, where are we in the Billy Irwin uh, career path right now? Uh, David Tete is definitely next. Commonwealth title fight, early October, and that's either going to be in London, Birmingham, or back in Toronto. I'm hoping to fly to Toronto. Sorry, guys. I'm hoping to fly to Toronto, uh, to London on Friday week and meet with Mickey Duff and see what we can put together. So now Billy is, becomes the number one contender, the mandatory challenger for that fight. Is Billy that right? Owen is the mandatory, defend, uh, mandatory contender. So when you win the title, what's the plan after that? I think when Billy wins the title, he's got two uh, options, or Duff will have two options on Irwin. Those options uh, are good paydays for Billy. They may be exercised, which is the defense of the Commonwealth, or hopefully maybe he can get an early shot, two fights after that at the world title. Uh, now, Give us your, before you go, give us your sense of what's going to, how this is going to go tonight. Sarmiento is a really unknown commodity for, for all of us, I guess. How do you see this fight going tonight? I think Billy will stop him in six rounds. Okay, we have that on paper. Trying to steal my job, the, the boxing the, the prophet. prophet. The boxing <laughs> prophet, too. I'll say four. Okay. <laughs> Gary, thanks right. a lot. Thanks, guys. As we see Psycho Sarmiento enter the ring. Nice touch with the Canadian flag in his glove. A taller fighter, when used to fighting taller fighters, as the kid, the pride and joy of not only Niagara Falls, Ontario, but indeed all of Canada. What a tremendous amateur fighter he was. 136 wins against just 11 losses as an amateur. The Canadian lightweight champion, the WBC Continental Champion. Traditionally coming into the sound of the pipes, and he's doing it once again. The fanfare begins. The spotlight on the champion, Billy Irwin, the WBC Continental Champion of the Americas. Undefeated as a professional. With a mandatory Commonwealth Championship bout against David Tete. If he can win this bout against Pablo Sarmiento. He is the most marketable Canadian boxer since Sean O'Sullivan. He is one of the nicest men in sports. He is a role model. And he has one hell of a luck run. Stephen Brunt, once again, the question is, do the eyes have it? Well, it's, it's going to be interesting early just to see if there is any... any you know, I, I, Billy Irwin, I don't think, comes in here worried about his eyes. I think he understands that, that the doctors have told him it's going to be fine not to worry. But 
but it's natural that you subconsciously, somewhere in the back of your mind, you're going to be thinking about it. The same way when he hurt his hand, you wondered, would he let the hand go? Would he be willing to do it? It took a little while for him to get over that. It'd be interesting just to see how he reacts tonight. Our ring announcer is Dan Carter. We'll go to him right now. Main event. This is the main event of the evening of the international contest of ten rounds in the lightweight division.
He's just trying to, to, to get Sarmiento's rhythm here, just trying to understand how, how Sarmiento works, how he moves, how he throws the jab. Patrick Cadotton had some trouble with Billy Irwin, and immediately following the surgery, Billy wanted to spar, forget the condition, he wanted to get in there. He loves this sport, absolutely adores it. And talking about taking apart opponents, we watched the lightweight championship of the world together, sitting next to each other when Delahoya fought uh, Rafael Luellas, and he said he will knock him out in the second round, here's why, here's how I feel.
three means a Commonwealth shot with David Tete. Perhaps in London, best case scenario, in Toronto. Sometime, maybe a month or two down the road, late October. Best case scenario. That obviously is the big stepping stone for Billy Irwin as honor to become a world-ranked fighter and, uh, and, and lead, that would lead pretty quickly, I think, to a world title fight. And a Commonwealth Championship is an automatic top 10 ranking by the WBC. That's right. Love to again by Billy Irwin. Bill Irwin never changes his expression in the ring. He can be up in a fight, down in a fight, and that show of emotion earlier on with the with the headbutt was a rare outburst of emotion for Billy Irwin in the ring. He's very contained. Oh, another good counter left. Sarmiento must almost feel like he wants to put that right hand away. He's throwing three and another headbutt. Sarmiento more comfortable moving okay. clockwise both. Irwin would not let him get into the other corner. You see Irwin again blocking everything instead of moving like Pat Khan wanted him to do to Patrick get up. Sarmiento's a little different look there. Brought the uppercut and the right hand behind. It changed up a bit because the jab right hand is what, what Irwin's been countering. Sarmiento attempted a combination but missed with both punches as Irwin blocked them both. There's, there it is again. Leading in there. Looking like Frank Bruno against Mike Tyson. Just going in and trying to... He was moving back and forth. Uh, so some pretty good footwork. And not, not a bad left jab, but you were very relaxed in there. Yeah, I was relaxed. Uh, I knew he was going to be on his bike. We got a cash show over there. As you can tell him, uh, you know, I'm a hard hitter. He's gonna, you better get on your bike or you're going to get hurt. I knew if I just kept the pressure on, but relaxed, cut off the ring, 
um, I was eventually going to draw him into making a mistake, and right away I saw two mistakes he was making, and that was the one I capitalized on him. And I went back to the corner, Patrick said, ah, you're doing good, just a little more head movement, keep it up, and, and that's what I was doing. He hit you with a couple, I mean, you got a couple head butts there in, in the second round. Did that really wake you up, or were you, did it get you off your game at all? Uh, no, I mean, this is boxing, you know, this isn't chess, we're not here to play, we're here to fight. And a headbutt's a headbutt, if I would I was going to knock him out anyways, if if it was, uh, if I cut me, I was, still, you know, no matter what, I was still going to get him. I was still going to wear him down and take him out, you know. Patrick, let's get you in here for a second. Pat Kahn, Billy the Kid Irwin's trainer. Uh, let's talk a bit about his, uh, his effort tonight. Well, it was an admirable effort. He went out to do a job, and he did the job. He, uh, he came, he saw, and he conquered. He did exactly what we wanted him to do. He, was, uh, he, didn't, he said he didn't have any ring rest. I felt he was just a little off the mark, but he was coming right into his own. And he was gonna, if, he couldn't, if he didn't get him out of there, he was going to punish him. And I knew that it was, he would probably get him out of there sooner or later. Billy, what's next for you? Well, um, um, Gary Oliver is going, uh, I think he's going to England next week. And they're going to try to hook up the David Teto fight for the Commonwealth title, hopefully October 1st or sometime later this year. Will Teto last as long as this guy? Not if I hit him like that. <laughs> no, that was right on the chin, I think. And, I mean, David Teto, I know it's going, to be, it's going to be a really, really hard fight, but I'm going to prepare myself like the best I ever have. And, you know, I know what I have to do to, to beat David Teto, and I'm going to give him my best shot. One last question, Billy. Uh, the eyes, were there any concern going into the ring tonight about your eyes at all? No. Nothing at all? None whatsoever. Well, Billy, congratulations on a successful, I don't know if we'd call it a comeback. You were away for four or five months. I, for one, am delighted to have you back. And you did come, you see, and you conquered. And continued success to uh, a great young man and a great young fighter. Well, thanks a lot. And, uh, you know, I'm just happy you're in here doing this with me. <laughs> thanks very much. Stephen, we saw quite a card tonight. Uh, Nitro Ned Dmitrieva came out in the, in the first bout of the evening. Didn't quite go his way. No, it didn't quite go his way. I think a disappointing pro debut for Nitro Ned, but you know, I assume he'll be back to fight another day. Greg Johnson, cool and deadly, was certainly that against Ernie Hauser in bout number two. This yeah, week. a very nice performance by Greg Johnson. I think showed us why you know we were excited about him as a, as a fighter, and I think uh, I think he showed a lot tonight. We also wanted to see Tony Bad Boy Badia come out, and uh, we got a look at him in Eastern Canada for the first time as a professional. Man, what a clinic. Well, an interesting fight with Tony Badia, and of course, an interesting decision. We end up with well. the, those rather uh, <laughs> novel scorecards. One, one judge said he won all eight. The other judge, one other judge had him losing. One had a draw. Um, I, you know, a disappointment, I think, Tony Badia coming east and getting that. I thought he won the fight. I, I, I thought it was pretty clear cut. I agree. Uh, Moses James, speaking of clinics.